بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان استك الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So we'll continue going through where we left off and this is the last chapter of the book um, which I introduced last week if you remember So we'll just go through where we left off inshallah and that was and the types of uh, tawagit so uh, the types of uh, false deities and the sheikh is going to explain them uh, one by one. There's five uh, types, main types, and the sheikh will explain and give us examples from the Quran and the Sunnah as evidences as well. So the sheikh uh, starts off with mentioning the chapter and the types, uh, uh, the types of false deities, and then on the, on the, in the header here. It's mentioned, it says, وَالتَّوَغِيتُ كَثِيرُونَ وَرُؤُوسُهُمْ خَمْسَةً إِبْلِيسُ لَأَنَهُ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ عُبِدَ وَهُوَ رَاذٍ So this is just a header. We'll go through it as, as we go through the pages. But the it mentions here that uh, the, um, the, false, the types of false deities or the false deities are many. However, at the head of these deities, there are five. At the heads of these deities, there are five main major False deities, and I'll explain inshallah. So the Shaykh goes on, he says, فَلَا يَجُوزُ لِأَحْدٍ أَنْ يُحَلِّلَ أَوْ يُحَرِّمَ مِنْ عِنْدِ نَفْسِهِ أَوْ يُتِيعَ مِنْ مَنْ حَلَ اللَّهِ أَوْ حَرَّمَ مِنْ عِنْدِ نَفْسِهِ So this is the, the paragraph that we went through last week, so we'll just continue, we don't need to go through that. So we'll start from point 79. He says, قَوْلُهُ وَالتَّوَاغِيدْ كَثِيرٌ وَرْعُوسُهُمْ خَمْسَ and his speech, the false deities are many, and at the head of them are five. At-Tawagitu al-Ladina yantabiku alayhim hada ta'rif kullu ma'budin aw matbu'in aw muta'in kathirun walakin ru'usahum khamsatun ya'ni akabirahum khamsa. So the Sheikh says here that, that the, the false deities, which the following definition applies to, and this and the definition uh, and the definition is every thing that is worshipped or followed or obeyed he says are many however at the heads of them there are five meaning the biggest or the uh, the biggest of those uh, from those false deities are five the sheikh he says al awwalu firstly he says iblis la'anahullah أي ثرده الله وأبعده عن رحمته بسبب أنه وبسبب أنه امتنع عن السجود لآدم وعصى الله سبحانه وتعالى وتكبر وقال قال أنا خير منه خلقتني من نار وخلقته من تين فعصى أمر الله وتكبر فلأنه الله وترده وأبعده وَسُمِّيَ إِبْلِيسِ كِيلَ لِأَنَّهُ أَبْلَسَ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ يَعْنِي يَأِسَ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ فَالْمُبْلِسِ هو, ال... هو الياس أو هو اليائس من الشيء فإبليس لانه الله رأس التواغيت لأنه هو الذي لأنه هو الذي يأمر بإبادة غير الله وهو الذي يأمر باتباع غير رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الذي يأمر بطاعة غير الله بتحليل وتحريم فإبليس هو مصدر الشر وهو رأس التواغيد So the Sheikh says so the first of these tawagid are the heads of the tawagid the first one is Iblis the shaitan may, uh, may Allah's curse be upon him i.e. meaning that you know he's rejected shaitan iblis is rejected and he's, he's far away from 
Allah's mercy. Why? For the reason that he uh, did not follow Allah's command when Allah said to him, prostrate to Adam. As we all are familiar with the story. And then uh, the Sheikh, he mentions an ayah which we'll go to as well, which we read in Arabic. Let's have a look at the meanings in English. This is from Surah al Sad, verse 76. So if we go there, verse 76, we'll see that uh, it says here, Iblis Satan said, I am better than he. You created me from fire and you created him from clay. And so by saying that and not uh, uh, following Allah's command to prostrate to Adam, um, then he, uh, Iblis disobeyed Allah. And he was arrogant, right? And so uh, Allah's curse is upon him and he's rejected and he's far away. We are sent far away. And he was he was called Iblis. It said, some of the people say it said that because uh, he is uh, devoid of uh, mercy, that he is is hopeless in in, in seeking mercy, become hopeful and discouraged. And so the Shaykh goes on to say, uh, towards the end of this paragraph, he says, so the person who is uh, uh, in the state of hopelessness and dis, uh, discouraged, he is what they say in Arabic, another word the Shaykh uses uh, in, uh, in uh, um, another Arabic word to mean the same thing, al is from a thing. So somebody who's discouraged from a thing, and obviously he's discouraged from Allah's mercy. He's hopeless for Allah's mercy because of what he did. Uh, and so Allah cursed him. And he is he is number one in um, uh, the shaitan is at the head of these tawagi, the false deities. It's, all, it's, it's the shaitan who is at the head of uh, these false deities, known as in Arabic, a tawagi. And the shaykh says, because he is the one who commands the people, the creation, the, the people, whether it's from mankind or the jinn, he commands them to worship other than Allah. He is the one who commands the people to follow other than the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he is the one who commands the people to or be obedient to other than Allah when it comes to that uh, which is uh, halal and haram, as we discussed last week, as you remember. So Iblis or Shaitan, he is the uh, the starting point or the source of evil. It all begins with him, and he is at the head of these false deities. He's he's at the he's, he's the head of the false deities. The second from these five heads, the second one in this list from the false deities um, is. And the Sheikh says, "Man ubida wa huwa radin, ay ubida wa huwa radin bi ibadat nasi lahu fa huwa taqut. Amma man ubida wa huwa ghayr radin bi dalika fala fala yadkhul fi hada, li an Isa alayhi salatu wa salam ubida min dun Allah, walakinhu ghayr radin bi dalika wa 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 um wa umhu wa uzair wa alauliya wa wa salihun." من عباد الله لا يرضون بهذا بل كانوا ينكرون هذا ويحاربون من من فعله فمن عبد وهو غير راض بذلك فإنه لا يسمى طاغوتا. So then the, uh, at the head this, at the heads of these tawagid there are five we mentioned the first one shaitan the second one and the sheikh says the second one is one, the one who is worshipped and he is pleased with being worshipped so the one who is worshipped and is pleased with being worshipped. The Sheikh says, i.e. Uh, is worshipped and is pleased with people worshipping him. And so this is a ta'ut, as you know. As for the one who is worshipped and he is displeased and is not happy with him being, being worshipped, then this person does not enter into this definition of being a ta'ut. He's not a ta'ut. And the Sheikh brings an example, a wonderful example. He says, uh, because, for example, in the example of Isa, alayhi salatu was salam, he he's worshipped, he's worshipped, uh, people worship worship him like the Christians, for example. However, he is displeased with that. 
And because of this, and, and, and also like his mum, they'll be displeased and Uzair. Yeah, Uzair as well. And, and the, and the righteous people and the awliya of Allah, you know, from, from the servants of Allah, they are displeased. And so they don't, so because of this displeasure in people worshipping them, then they do not come under this definition. So we need to understand that it's only if a person is worshipped and he is pleased, he or she is pleased with that happening. Why? Because we know that the, the servants of Allah, the righteous, the prophets, the messengers, the righteous people, yeah, the awliya of Allah, that if, if, if they were alive and they, they saw this happening in front of them, they would disavow it and they would reject it automatically and they would fight against the people who did this. So then the Sheikh says, so whoever is worshipped and he is displeased with that, for indeed then he is not called a Tagut, as, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier as well. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, وَلِذَلِكَ لَمَّا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ قَوْلُهُ قَوْلَهُ إِنَّكُمْ وَمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ حَصَبُ جَهَنَّمَ أَنْتُمْ لَهَا وَالِدُونَ فَرَحَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ وَقَالُوا نَحْنُ نَعْبُدُ نَعْبُدُ الْمَصِيحَ وَنَعْبُدُ وَنَعْبُدُ إِذًا هُمْ مَعَنَا فِي النَّارِ فَأَنزَلَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى إِنَّ الَّذِينَ سَبَقَتْ لَهُمْ مِنَّ الْحُسْنَى أُولَئِكَ عَنْهَا مُبْعَدُونَ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ حَصِيصَهَا وَهُمْ فِي مَشْتَهَتْ أَنفُسُهُمْ خَالِدُونَ وَفِي الْآيَةِ الْأُخْرَى قَالُوا وَقَالُوا أَآلِهَتُنَا خَيْرٌ أَمْ هُوَ يَأْنُونَ عِيسَى عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ ثُمَّ قَالَ مَا ضَرَبُوهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَدَلًا بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ خَصِمُونَ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا عَبْدٌ عَنْ عَنْ عَمَ عَنْ عَمْنَا عَلَيْهِ وَجَعَلْنَاهُ مَثَلًا لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ فَهُوَ عَبْدٌ عَبْدٌ لِلَّهِ وَلَا يَرْضَى أَنْ يُعْبَدَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ بَلْ بَعَثَهُ اللَّهُ بِإِنْكَارِ ذَلِكَ مَا قُلْتُ لَهُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَمَرْتَنِي بِهِ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ فالذي أبدى وهو غير راض بذلك لا يدخل في لا يدخل في هذا الوعيد ولا يكون طاغوتا لأنه منكر لذلك لأن الطاغوت لأن الطاغوت هو الذي يرضى بأن يعبد من دون الله عز وجل. So then in this long paragraph, the Sheikh says, and so likewise as uh, in the speech of Allah when Allah revealed the following ayahs that we read. Then uh, let's go through them one by one and then we'll translate as well. So the first ayah is from Surah Al-Anbiya verse 97 that the Sheikh mentions. Or verse 98, sorry. Let's read that. Certainly you disbelievers and that which you are worshipping now besides Allah are but fuel for hell. Surely you will enter it. So when Allah sent this ayah, revealed this ayah to the Prophet ﷺ and then you know, it became knowledge to the rest of the people. Uh, the mushrikun of that time, the polities of that time, they, they, they became happy. The Sheikh says that they, they became happy with this, uh, you know, with, with regards to what was being said. And they said, oh, uh, we uh, worship, uh, you know, the Masih, yani Isa. We worship Isa and we worship and we worship this and that. Uh, and they said, oh, so therefore, they're with us in the fire because we're going to go in the fire because uh, according to the Quran. So, you know, they're going to be with us in the fire according to this ayah. But then... Allah revealed the following ayah and, 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 and this is from Surah Al-Anbiya. So just pay attention. Uh, so if you go to Surah Al-Anbiya, verse 101 to 102. So follow on. Verily those for whom the good has proceeded from us, they will be removed far there from hell. E.g. Isa, uh, Jesus, son of Maryam, Mary, uh, uh, Uzair, uh, Ezra, etc. They shall not hear the slightest sound of it, hell while they abide in that which their own selves desire. So then, Allah revealed these two ayahs uh, 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 to rebut these mushrikeen uh, and clarify to us. And then the shaykh goes on to say, and also in another ayah as well, uh, which we also read, and this is from Surah Al-Zukhruf, verse 58. So let's go there. Surah Al-Zukhruf, verse 58. Let's read that. And say, are our gods better or is he Isa? They quoted not the above example except for argument. Nay, but they are a quarrelsome people. 
And then there's a reference also to see ver- uh, from chapter 21, verse 97 to 101 as well. So whoever wants to have a look at that, they can. So then the Sheikh says, and you know, by this they meant Isa, as explained in the ayah here, the, in the translation that we just read, um, in the meanings that, that they meant by this Isa. So then the next ayah, uh, the next set of ayahs that we read were from, from verse 58 and, well, 59. So let's read 15, 59. He, Isa, was not more than a slave. We granted our favor to him and we made him an example to the children of Israel, i.e. I, his creation without a father. So then that clarifies what the Sheikh is saying here as well. So then the Sheikh says here, he says, so he is, he is a slave of Allah and he's not pleased that people worship him besides Allah. And then the Sheikh says, rather, Allah sent him in, in rejection of this. And so if we go to Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 117, which the Sheikh quoted, we'll see that uh, rejection by Isa alayhi salam himself. And so if we go to uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 117, let's read it from the start. Never did, so this is what Isa will say, Never did I say to them, ought except what you, Allah, did command me to say, Worship Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. And I was a witness over them while I dwelt amongst them. But when you look, when you took me up, you were the watcher over them. And you are witness to all things. This is a great admonition and warning to the Christians of the whole world. So that's the whole ayah that we just read there. The meaning of, thereof. So there's clear, and the Sheikh's clarified that through the evidences he mentioned here. And so then the Sheikh, he goes on to say, <clears throat> he goes on to say here, so those who worshipped him, uh, so those, uh, so those, he says, uh, that were worshipped from these examples that were given, they were displeased with that. And so because they were displeased with that, uh, and correctly so, uh, then they don't enter into this definition of uh, what's uh, called a ta'ut, uh, as the Sheikh mentioned earlier as well. And they don't come under this uh, warning and potential punishment either. Because all of them, they... Uh, rejected uh, uh, like being worshipped you know besides Allah of course they came with the message of Tawheed yeah which is which is the opposite of that so then the Sheikh he says so they're displeased with them being worshipped uh, besides Allah Azawajal. so then we move on to point 80 and that's the third in this list of five uh, who are, are the heads of the Tawagi the false deities and the Sheikh he says, Wathalith, and thirdly, he says, Wathalithu, Man da'an nas, Man da'an nasa ila ibadati nafsihi, Mithlu ru'us al-mushrikeen al-ladheena yad'oon al-nasa ila ibadat, ila ibadati anfusihim, Mithlu fir'aun, qala, faqala ana rabbukum ul-a'la. So then, the third of the five, or who are the heads of the Tawagheed, then, the third here, the Sheikh mentions, he says, whoever calls the people to the to his worship, so whoever calls the people to worshipping him. And the Sheikh gives some examples, he says, like the heads of the polytheists, the mushrikun, uh, who call the people to worship them and themselves. And likewise, another example, uh, there are many, but the Sheikh gives this a second example, and uh, he says, like Fir'aun, and then he quotes an ayah which we read in Arabic, and uh, uh, where uh, the meaning of that is, uh, and he said, "I am your Lord, the Highest, the High." So he was called. He was he was calling himself a Lord. He's calling himself a Lord, you know, and calling people to worship him, calling to himself. So this is an example. So then the Sheikh goes on to say. وَمِثْلُ النِّمْرُودِ وَمِثْلُ غُلَاتَ الصُّوفِيَّةِ الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ النَّاسَ إِلَى عِبَادَتِهِمْ حَتَّى إِنَّهُمْ يُوصُونَ النَّاسَ أَنْ يَعْبُدُوهُمْ بَعْدَ مَا يَمُوتُونَ فَيَقُولُ أَحَدُهُمْ إِذَا أَعْيَتْهُكُمْ الْأُمُورُ فَأَتُوا أَوْ فَأَتُوا إِلَى قَبْرِي أي إِذَا أَجَزَتْكُمْ الْأُمُورُ فَأْتُوا إِلَىٰ قَبْرِي وَلَا يَحُولُ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنِي حِفْنَ مِنَ التُّرَابِ يُوصُونَ النَّاسِ أَنْ يَأْتُوا إِلَىٰ قُبُورِهِمْ وَيَأْبُدُونَهُمْ أَنَّهُمْ سَيَقُومُونَ بِحَوَائِجِّهِمْ 
فمن دع الناس إلى عبادة نفسه حيا وميتا فهو من رؤوس التواغيت وكذلك من, من دع الناس إلى عبادة غيره من التواغيت وهم دعاة الشرك هؤلاء التواغيت الذين يزينون الشرك للناس ويسمونه بغير اسمه ويقولون هذا من باب التوسل أو هذا من باب الشفاعات وهم كثير So then the Sheikh Hafiz Allah he continues and he says and he gives him the example he says like Nimrod, Nimrud, Nimrod and like the extreme Sufis from the extremist Sufis but the likes of the Sufis who call the people uh, to worshipping them up until that they advise and they give them admonitions to the people that they should worship them after uh, they die for example when they die you know remember me worship me come to my grave ask for things etc so the sheikh he says so the, he says uh, uh, so, so one of them will say he'll say uh, if if your situation becomes hard or you know you find difficulties in your path uh, that or in your affairs come to my grave i.e. you know if you be, if you find a situation where you're not going anywhere, you need some help, you need assistance, whatever it might be. They say, come to my grave, come to my grave and do such and such. For example, if you come to my grave, nothing will stand between between you and your goal, for example. So whether that is that standing in front of you at the moment or blocking you from the various obstacles that we may face, what, what they say is that if you come to my grave, uh, etc., then... Uh, then that obstacle will be removed and nothing will stand between you and what, what, where, where you need to be from your, whether it's a provision or some other thing in the, in the worldly life or whatever it may be. And so they ad, uh, give admonitions and advice and recommendations like this to the people. Uh, uh, and, you know, and then people, obviously, you know what happens. Uh, people who are none the wiser, uh, you know, they uh, who are no, don't have understanding of Tawheed and the correct Akida. Um, then they, of course, do this and uh, carry out these such uh, advices and admonitions and follow through with them. And so they start worship, uh, worshipping these people. Um, and, you know, because they believe that they will, you know, um, carry out and deal with their needs and execute wherever they require. So then the Sheikh says, so whoever uh, calls the people uh, to uh, uh, worshipping them, whether they be alive or whether they be uh, dead and passed away. So then the, this is classed as being from the heads of the false deities, the uh, heads of the Tawagid. And likewise, the Sheikh also said, whoever calls uh, to the worship of other than him from those false deities, then this is also shirk. Is called, uh, and, and they are the uh, du'at of shirk. They call people to shirk. And so the Sheikh, he says, these are the head, uh, he said, the Sheikh says that these are the false, are also false deities. Those who uh, beautify shirk to the people and they name it, they, they give names to the shirk, as we know, they give names, uh, uh, they give these beautiful names to trick the people, to mislead them. And they say that this is from, uh, uh, you know, from, uh, let's say, uh, from Tawassal, you know, for example, seeking nearness or uh, etc. Uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by a middle way, for example. Uh, and obviously it's incorrect Tawassal because they're not, they're not explaining this particular thing uh, uh, correctly or this particular, uh, particular concept or they'll confuse the people or they'll say uh, this is from uh, the uh, way of intercession, for example. And the Sheikh says, uh, and, and there are, uh, they are many. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, Inna haulai tawagit li annahum yadu'una ila shirki fahum yadu'una ila ibadati ghayri Allahi wa yisamuna thalika bi ghayri ismihi wa yuzayinunahu linnasi bi shubuhati wa zukhru fil qawl haulai hum hum tawagit du'atu shirki tawagit wa kullu man ubida min duni Allahi wa radhiya bi thalika awda'a al-nas ila ibadati nafsi awda'a al-nas ila ibadati ghayri Allah فَإِنَّهُ مِنَ التَّوَغِيدِ 
بل هو من رؤوس التواغيت نسأل الله للعافية So then in this paragraph the Shaykh just gives us a summary of everything else that he said earlier and just in the last sentence here the Shaykh he asks for strength and health uh, that you know we avoid these situations and so we move on to point 81 the Shaykh says الرابع and fourth in this list of five number four and he says الرابع uh, من ادعى شيئا من علم الغيب and the fourth type of Tawood that is at the head of the Tawagid, the head of the Tawagid, the head of the uh, false deities, and there are five. The fourth one in that list is the one who claims they know a thing from the knowledge of the or uh, the knowledge of the unseen or the world of the unseen. As we know, only Allah has the knowledge of the unseen. Nobody else possesses this, and so whoever claims it, then they are classed as a Tawood, right? Uh, so then the Sheikh will explain. So the Sheikh says, وَهَذَا يَدْخُلُ فِيهِ الصَّحَرَ وَالْمُنَجِّمُونَ وَالْكُهَانَ وَالرَّمَالُونَ وَكُلُّ مَنْ يَدَّعِي أَنَّهُ يَأْلَمُ الْغَيْبُ وَيَقُولُ لِلنَّاسِ سَيَحْصُلُ لَكُمْ كَذَا وَكَذَا أَنْتَ سَيَحْصُلُ لَكَ سَعَادَةً أَوْ يَحْصُلُ لَكَ شَيْءٌ مِنَ التَّعْبِ أو توفق في زواج أو لا توفق هؤلاء يدعون علم الغيب والغيب لا يعلمه إلا الله سبحانه وتعالى قال تعالى قل لا يعلم من في السماوات والأرض الغيب إلا الله وقال تعالى عالم الغيب فلا يظهر على غيبه أحدا إلا من ارتضى من رسول بقال تعالى وعنده مفاتح الغيب لا يعلمها إلا هو ويعلم ما في البر والبحر وما تسقط من ورقة إلا يعلمها ولا حبة في ظلمات الأرض ولا رطب ولا يابس إلا في كتاب مبين. So then the Sheikh he goes on to say in this paragraph and start from point eighty one. I said so whoever claims um, uh, the knowledge of the unseen and so uh, the sheikh says that this enters the following types of people uh, and that is the magicians the astrologers who use the stars and you know like that and the uh, soothsayers and the likes and the sheikh says all uh, all of uh, everyone or every who, everyone whom claims that he has knowledge of the unseen and he says to the people, you'll, uh, you'll obtain a such and such in the future. Uh, you're, you're going to have this in the future. And, you know, you know, we, we all know about this. Uh, and so the Sheikh says, for example, uh, they, they may say, oh, you'll obtain uh, pleasure and happiness. You know, you'll obtain a thing. Uh, you know, you might obtain or come across a thing from that will cause you tiredness or certain issues. Or you may, for example, um, uh, you, uh, your, your marriage may be accepted or not. And, and such and you know the likes of these sort of things um uh, so the sheikh says that these people they call uh, to uh, they call uh, to the uh, to have the knowledge of the unseen and the sheikh says that the unseen and the knowledge of the unseen only allah knows it nobody else does it's knowledge only with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so the sheikh uh, sheikh he presents some evidences from the quran and so he says um uh, as we read in Arabic, so let's go through the first ayah of the translation in English, Surah al Naml, verse 65. So if you go to Surah al Naml, verse 65, say, None in the heavens and the earth knows the ghayb unseen except Allah, nor can they perceive when they shall be resurrected. First evidence. Second one is from Surah al Jinn, verse 26 to 27. So, uh, Let's have a look at that as well. Surah Al Jinn, verse 26 to 27. He alone, the all knower of the unseen, and he reveals to none his ghaib or unseen, except to a messenger from mankind who he has chosen. He informs him of unseen as much as he likes, and then he makes a band of watching God's angels to march before him and behind him. And the next set of evidences are from Surah Al-An'am. So the uh, verse 59 from Surah Al-An'am. Let's go there. Verse 59. Surah Al-An'am. 
Let's read the whole ayah from here. Oh yeah, okay. And with him are the keys of the ghaib, all that is hidden. None knows them but he, and he knows whatever there is in or on the earth and in the sea. Not a leaf falls, but he knows it. There is not a grain in the darkness of the earth, nor anything fresh or dry, but is written in a clear record. So these are the evidences for that that the Sheikh presents to us. So then the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, لا يألمها إلا هو That only he knows it, i.e. Allah, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of the unseen. And so uh, the Sheikh goes on to say here, هذا حصر فلا يألم الغيب إلا الله أو من اتلع أو من اتلعه الله على شيء من الغيب من رسله لأجل مصلحة البشر والمؤجزة للرسول لكن لم يألم الغيب من ذات نفسه وإنما علمه للغيب من تعليم علمه للغيب من تعليم الله له فلا يألم الغيب إلا الله فمن ادعى علم الغيب فإنه يكون مشاركا لله في مختص به سبحانه فيكون مشركا وطاغوتا وكافرا وهذا من أعظم الأنواع الردة عن الإسلام So then the Shaykh he goes on to say here to explain to us that this is restricted or constricted or is restricted uh, to Allah Azza wa Jal the knowledge of the unseen this is with Allah only and whomsoever from his messengers that he decides to uh, give knowledge about the unseen too then they only know it by way of Allah teaching them that they don't know it from themselves and only Allah knows it all of it and so whatever Allah divulged to the messengers and the prophets with regards to the unseen they only know that which Allah taught them so we need to make sure and understand this properly uh, and then the Shaykh goes on to say here that, that so uh, when people claim that they have the knowledge of the unseen like you know these mess, um, these um, uh, magicians or astrologers and the soothsayers and the hand readers and you know all these sorts of people uh, uh, that exist uh, then they are uh, lining themselves up at the same level of Allah Azawajal. why? because this uh, this knowledge is specific to Allah only Allah has it and so if somebody else claims it they are then as we learn from the principles of reading this book and some of the other books that we've learned from uh, previously that that means that that person whoever claims that he is leveling himself with Allah Azawajal, and therefore it becomes shirk and this is the reason why it is shirk and kufr so then the Sheikh says, so this person who says this, then he is a polytheist, he's a mushrik, he is also a tagut, and he is, uh, he is a false deity, classed as a false deity, and he is also a disbeliever. And this is major disbelief. Whoever believes this is a major disbelief. Um, uh, and so then the Sheikh says, and this is from the greatest types of leaving Islam or, or, or being, being made to leave Islam by committing some of these actions. These are from the greatest types that will lead you away and make you uh, make you uh, become uh, a person who is out of the fold of Al-Islam. So then we move on to point 82, Al-Khamis. Al-Khamis, the fifth and the final one from the heads of the uh, false deities at Tawagheed. The Sheikh says, Al-Khamisu, Man hakama bi ghayri ma anzal Allah wa daliluhu qawluhu ta'ala يريدون أن يتحاكموا إلى الطاغوت فالذي يحكم بغير ما أنزل الله مستحلا لذلك يكون طاغوتا والذي يقول إنه يجوز أن يتحاكموا إلى القانون أو إلى العوائد في الجاهلية أو عوائد القبائل والبادية ويترك الشرع يقول هذا حلال أو هذا يساوي ما أنزل الله فإذا قال إنه أحسن مما أنزل الله أو يساوي ما أنزل الله أو قال إنه حلال فقط ولم يقل إنه يساوي ولا أفضل قال حلال جائز هذا يؤتبر تاوتا وهذا بنص القرآن قال تعالى يريدون أن يتحاكموا إلى التاوت سمي تاوتا لأنه لأنه تجاوز حدا أما من حكم بغير ما أنزل الله وهو يقر 
وهو يقر أن أن ما أنزل الله هو الواجب الاتباع هو الواجب الاتباع والحق وأن وأن غيره باطل وأنه يحكم بباطل فهذا يعتبر كافرا الكفر الأصغر الذي لا يخرج من الملة لكنه على خطر عظيم على طريق قد يصل به إلى الكفر المخرج من الملة إذا تساهل في هذا الأمر. So you need to pay attention to this section because it's quite important, very important. And as you know, there's all of the book is important and all of the chapters are important. But as we know, there's some knowledge that's more important or some principles that are more important than, than the others, uh, depending on the situation. So uh, just pay attention to this, what the Sheikh is saying here. So it says, uh, fifthly, or uh, number five in, 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 in the heads of the Tawagid, the, the false deities, it is the one who makes a judgment or uh, makes legislation or ruling other than what Allah has revealed. Um, on other than what Allah has sent down and the evidence for it is where Allah said and we read these ayahs in Arabic so let's go to uh, Surah An-Nisa verse 60 Surah An-Nisa verse 60 have you seen those hypocrites who claim that they believe in that which has been sent down to you and that which was sent down before you and they wish to go for judgment in their disputes to the Tawud, false judges etc while they have been ordered to reject them for shaitan Satan wishes to lead them far astray so that's the whole ayah that I've read from there and so the sheikh says so who who um who um judges or legislates other than that which allah sent down seeking to make something permissible for example uh so this person is, is a ta'ud um uh, is a false deity class as a false deity and the one who says for example uh it is permissible uh, you know, in you know, making judgments uh, in 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 certain laws, or uh, you know, with regards to um, you know certain habits or traditions uh, in the times of Jahiliya, for example, or what their uh, tribes uh, and the people of the desert, the Bedouins, are upon, for example, just different examples the Sheikh brings, uh, uh, and then they leave they leave the the uh, the shar the Sharia over this. Uh, or uh, for example he says uh, this is halal uh, and this is the same or is uh, more or less the same as what Allah has revealed for example or if he says um, uh, this is better this is better uh, than what Allah sent down or he says that this is equal to what Allah sent down uh, and uh, you know in, in, indeed it is uh, uh, halal or for example if he says or oh, uh, this thing is only it's only halal or he says uh, or he uh, for example he, he doesn't say indeed um uh, it uh, equals for example or is similar to uh, or is better and he said for, or he says for example he says halal uh, this is halal and it's uh, permissible permiss- uh, it's permissible and allowed the sheikh says that this is uh, this is considered a tagut uh, and the Sheikh says that the evidence is by the very uh, Quran, uh, the ayat of the Quran. And so he brings another evidence that we read in Arabic. We'll read, uh, we'll read the meanings. Uh, um, uh, it's the same ayah actually that we read uh, earlier from the from the same ayah that they that they want to you know judge and go to their false judgments or the people who are making these false judgments. That, that that's what they want, and they want to judge and rule by that. And and the Sheikh says that they called uh, Tagut. Because they have gone beyond the limits. As we remember, as the Sheikh mentioned last week, that what does Tagut mean in the language? And Togyan, what does it mean in the language? It means going beyond the bounds. And here it's going beyond the bounds that Allah has set for his servants. So then the Sheikh says, here he says, so, uh, so as for, he says, so, the Sheikh says, as for whoever rules with other than what Allah has revealed in terms of Allah's legislation and the Sharia however he admits and he he knows and he believes and he admits that um, uh, and uh, and affirms uh, that what Allah has sent down is obligatory to be followed and is the truth uh, and and other than that which Allah uh, uh, and other than that which Allah sent down so everything else is falsehood then uh, he 
uh, and then he still, you know, and he obviously rules with that falsehood. For uh, for then then the Sheikh says that this is considered somebody who's fallen into the lesser kufr or the lesser disbelief, al kufr al asghar. So it doesn't take him out of the religion of this person in this situation. Uh, um, it doesn't take him outside of the fold of the religion. However, uh, he is upon a very dangerous path and he's in a very dangerous situation. So the Sheikh says that this path that he's upon uh, will eventually lead him to the type of kufr, the greater kufr, that will then cause him to leave the fold of Islam if he is easy in these affairs, if he continues upon these this kind of affair and thinking. So you can see how uh, grave the matter can be. But we can see how important it is to understand it correctly as well. Because misinterpreting and not having the correct understanding could also cause a lot of problems, you know. You could all of a sudden say about a Muslim leader, which we shouldn't, but you know, people do this all the time. You must hear it. Where they're saying, oh, this person doing that, this, you know, without actually having proper knowledge and they're just making kufr and taking the people out of the fold of Islam willy-nilly, you know. So we have to be very, very careful, you know, about, about these things. And we need to make sure that we understand these principles, how the Sheikh has explained it. We need to make sure we have a sound understanding, you know. Um, so then the Sheikh goes on to say, says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ حَكَمَا بِغَيْرِ مَنْزَلَ اللَّهِ عَنْ غَيْرِ تَعَمُّدْ بَلْ عَنْ اجتهاد وَهُوَ مِنْ أَهْلِ وَهُوَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الاجتهاد مِنْ الْفُقَهَا وَاشْتَهَدَ وَلَكِنْ لَمْ يُصِبْ حكم الله وأخطأ في اجتهاده فهذا مغفور له قال صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حكم الحاكم فاجتهد ثم أصاب فله أجران وإذا حكم فاجتهد ثم أخطأ فله أجر لأنه لم يأتمد لأنه لم لم يأتمد الخطأ ويريد الحق ويريد موافقة حكم ويريد موافقة حكم الله عز وجل لكنه لم يوفق له فهذا يعتبر معذورا ومعجور ولكن لا يجوز اتباعه على الخطا لا يجوز لنا ان نتبعه على الخطا ومن ومن هذا اجتهاد ومن هذا ومن هذا اجتهادات الفقهاء التي اخطاوا فيها او اجتهاد اجتهادات القضاة في المحاكم اذا اجتهدوا وبذلوا وساهم في طلب الوصول إلى الحق ولكن لم يوفقوا أو لم يوفقوا فخطأهم مغفور. So then the sheikh goes on to say in this paragraph it mentions a different example here now. So as for those who made some judgments or arrived to some edicts or judgments other than that which Allah has revealed, but not Deliberately, so but not deliberately, not deliberately doing things to make things halal or haram. Like for example, however, they tried their best to try to come to some kind of conclusion. Um, uh, uh, and he is from the people of knowledge, and he's a mujtahid, so he's a scholar, a faqih, you know, at that level. Um, and he is trying to come to uh, some kind of uh, judgment, uh, um, but not. Deliberately, but because maybe there isn't is not clear or for, uh, I'll, I'll come with an example inshallah to explain that and so for example if a person in this situation a scholar it's a scholar is a mujtahid for example right um, uh, makes a mistake then uh, then he takes one reward and he is excused because he was trying to arrive at the right correct judgment based on the book of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger yeah and if he is correct in his judgment, then he gets two rewards. So this is how this situation is looked at when it comes to the people of knowledge. And then the Shaykh, he mentions the sites, uh, Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu which um, in the meaning of that uh, whoever uh, makes a judgment and he, and, and he strives hard to make the correct judgment and he makes the correct judgment, then he is rewarded with two rewards. And if he makes a judgment and tries his hardest to, to arrive at the truth. And we're talking about the people of knowledge here. Um, and then he makes a mistake, right? For him is just a single reward, right? 
And then the Shaykh goes on to say that obviously because they're not doing it on purpose, they're trying to come to that which is in agreement with the Quran and the Sunnah uh, 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 in certain situations. Um, uh, and so, uh, you know, they, uh, they, they, they're not in the category of the other people in the previous paragraph that the Shaykh mentioned. They want the truth and they want it to be in uh, in line with uh, the uh, the uh, legislation of Allah, as a the Sharia of Allah. Um, however, uh, for example, maybe it wasn't agreed or whatever, if they made a mistake in the situation, it happens, um, they are excused uh, and they get one reward and they are also excused. Yeah. But the Sheikh says, so if there's a mistake, it's not permissible to follow that mistake. Once the, if the mistake is clarified, the mistake has been clarified, then it's not permissible. It's not, uh, you, you do not follow the mistake, which makes sense to all of us here, I'm sure. And it's not uh, permissible for us uh, to follow uh, a mistake, to follow somebody upon a mistake. And so from this, uh, uh, so, uh, from the Fuqaha, the scholars, when they try to do, when they make a mistake, for example, or, you know, uh, the, it was whether the judges themselves in the courts, in the Islamic courts, they, you know, accidentally, you know, not, you know, intentionally, unintentionally make a mistake. You know, they obviously try their best to arrive at the best conclusion. Then at the end of the day, uh, uh, they are trying to uh, reach the truth uh, in this particular situation, uh, and so you know, if they make a mistake, then they are forgiven. You know, you know. And there's like certain things, you know, um, like for example, modern life. For example, you know, you might not find a particular ruling on uh, one of the brothers, the brother Saki, you mentioned, for example, last week in his lesson in Usul al Fiqh, and uh, you know about the traffic lights. You know, for example, okay, you, you're not going to find something about speeding, traffic lights and things like this in the Qur'an. But, you know, then the scholars will work hard to come to a conclusion based on the Qur'an and Sunnah and extrapolate, etc. and to come to a correct uh, 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 um, uh, sort of law. Uh, and so so that it coincides, you know, with the Qur'an and Sunnah and things like that. Uh, and how, uh, you know, about uh, how to adapt in the Islam. Allah sent religion down that uh, for us, that it's, it helps us in all walks of life in every single time period. And so uh, it's important to understand the differences of what the sheikhs mentioned here um, in terms of uh, 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 the legislature that the sheikh mentioned here and how we go about it and how we understand it properly uh, so we don't, uh, 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 you know, misconstrue what's being said. Yeah. So then uh, uh, point 83, the sheikh, he says, قال سبحانه وتعالى لا إكراه في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَتِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْغُثْقَةِ لَمْ فِي سَمَلَهَا وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ لا إكراه في الدين معناه أن أحدا لا يكره على الدخول في الإسلام لأن الدخول في الإسلام لا بد أن يكون عن اقتناع وَأَتِقَادْ بِالْقَلْبِ وَلَا يُكْرَحْ عَلَيْ أَحَدْ لَا يُمْكِنُ هَذَا لِأَنَّ الْقُلُوبَ لَا يَتَصَرَّفْ فِيهَا إِلَّا اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَا يُكْرَحْ أَحَدٌ عَلَى الْإِسْلَامِ لِأَنَّنَا لَا نَمْلِكُ الْقُلُوبَ وَإِنَّمَ اللَّهُ جَلَّ وَعَلَى هُوَ الَّذِي يَمْلِكُهَا وَيَتَصَرَّفْ فِيهَا وَلَكِنْ نَحْنُ نَدْعُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ للإسلام ونرغب فيه ونجاهد في سبيل الله من من كفر لأجل نشر الإسلام وإتاحة الفرصة لمن يريد أن يسلم ولأجل قمع أعداء الله أما الهداية فهي فهي بيد الله سبحانه وتعالى لا أحد أو لا أحد يكره على الإيمان Islam. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, Nikos Ayah. So let's go, we'll, we'll get the translation of that first before we carry on. So uh, the Ayah that's quoted here was uh, from a previous lesson, I believe. Give me one second, let me see if I can find this. Uh, from Surah Al Baqarah, they mentioned, it was mentioned in the previous lesson as well, I believe. So um, let's read the meaning. Surah Al Baqarah, verse 256. There is no compulsion in religion. Verily, the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in Taghut and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And Allah is the all-hearer 
and the all knower so then the shaykh goes on to say uh, after mentioning this ayah he says that there's no compulsion in the religion and the shaykh says his meaning is that nobody is made to you know being forced you know forced under duress uh, to enter islam because the shaykh says because entering in islam uh, uh, it's incumbent that uh, the person is content and that he, he in, and he has the belief in his heart that he wants to enter islam and that he's not obviously um uh made to enter it uh, forcefully and so the shaykh goes on to say here he says it's not possible uh, that uh, you know that somebody's you know if the heart uh, if the heart is not there you know they they they, they don't believe in it that, that you can force someone they, they they wouldn't be a believer because as we know the belief is in the heart you know as well so it starts there this is the starting point and um so the shaykh says that uh that we don't own the hearts you know we don't know what's in the heart you know so the person has to be content as we all know and what's mentioned in the, uh, in the ayah there in the meaning was cl- clear so then the shaykh says it says allah jalla the uh, he is the one who who uh you know is in control of these hearts you know and makes them turn you know as we all know and so the success comes from Allah and the guidance it comes from Allah we, we can advise the people uh, portray the message make sure it reaches them but ultimately in the end the, su- the success and the in the end the guidance and them accepting it that comes from Allah uh, Jalla Wala and so the Sheikh says but we, we, we call the people to Islam and we hope for them to accept it and we call them to that and we uh, you know, we work hard in the in in, in this. Uh, you know, we 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 work hard and we strive in the path of Allah, as the Uh So, whoever uh, disbelieves, uh, uh, whoever disbelieves, so the Sheikh says, "Man kafar, uh, kafar li ajli nashal Islam wa itahat al fursa li man yurid an yuslim, wa li ajli qima ada Allah am al hidayah faya biyadilah." So, the, what the Sheikh said here that in the end. <coughs> That the guidance, ultimate guidance in the end is from Allah Jalla wa'ala. And so for us, it's to do the, the work, you know, on the ground. You call the people to Islam. You know, you set a good example. You know, all the things regarding da'wah and the call to Islam and calling people to Tawheed and, and the success in the end is from Allah Jalla wa'ala. And they accept it. And so we work hard and this helps us to uh, reduce as well the Sheikh said the uh, reduce the uh, the enemies of Allah so the more people accept Islam and then extinguishes uh, 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 more of the enemies of Allah Jalla of course and those people who who are not from Islam or who uh, are from the Ada Allah yeah from the enemies of Allah so then the Sheikh says here in the next paragraph wa inna ma hada shay'un raji' ilayhi wa thumma qala ta'ala qad tabayyana ar-rushd min al-ghay for Islam وَلِلَّهِ الْحَمْدِ لَيْسَ فِيهِ مَا يُكْرَحْ بَلْ كُلُّهُ مَحْبُوبُ وَمَرْغُوبُ وَالْكُفْرُ وَالشِّرْكُ كُلُّهُ شَرْ وَكُلُّهُ مَكْرُوحُ قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ هَذَا مِنْ هَذَا تَمَيِّزُ الرُّشْدَ وَهُوَ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الْغَيْ وَهُوَ الْبَاطِلِ وَالْإِنسَانِ عِنْدَهُ عَقْلُ وَعِنْدَهُ تَفْكِيرُ يُوَازِنُ بَيْنَ الْحَقِّ وَالْبَاطِلِ سَيَهْدِيهِ تَفْكِيرُ سَيَهْدِيهِ تَفْكِيرُهُ إِنْ كَانَ سَلِيمًا وَسَالِمًا مِنَ الْهَوَى وَالدَّوَافِعِ سَيَهْدِيهِ تَفْكِيرُهُ السَّلِيمُ إِلَىٰ قَبُولِ الْحَقِّ بِدُونِ أَنْ يُكْرَحْ هَذَا قَوْلٌ فِي الْآيَةِ Then the Shaykh uh, mentions the other part of the ayah that we just read, mentions just the uh, same part of it, that تَبَيِّنَ الرُّشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ That uh, indeed uh, the, uh, the guidance and the truth uh, and the correct path has been clarified and made distinct from uh, the, the false path and the wrong and the evil and the opposite of that. And then the Shaykh says that he says Islam and all praises due to Allah belongs to Allah. He says is not. Uh, he says Laysa fihi ma yukar. There isn't anything in Islam that is disliked. Rather, all of it is loved and is desired. And kufr, disbelief, and shirk, polytheism, all of it is evil and all of it is disliked in reality. And then the Shaykh says that you know that. This has been clarified from this, meaning that falsehood, uh, that the truth and the right path and guidance has been clarified from that which is false and the opposite to it. And the people and the person, the human being, 
he has intelligence he possesses intelligence and an intellect and he has he has ability to think so he's able to weigh up that uh, he's able to weigh up the truth with the falsehood and so he's guided by this if he's if he is uh if he has a clean clear heart no bias and really wants to learn the truth and find it then this will help him and uh allow him to accept islam and he'll fill his heart with iman and so this with somebody with a sound mind clear no was in there was nothing else pushing him away uh was nothing else putting doubts in his head for example and, and the likes then this person will eventually will arrive to uh accepting islam and he won't have anything of dislike or anything in his heart like that and he won't be also in a state of compulsion he won't feel like that. he'll be content in accepting it because he's willfully accepted and submitted to the will of allah jalla so that that the sheikh says that that's the first that, that's the first uh that's the first uh so-called saying on that or uh, say on that then the sheikh says al qawl thani the second uh saying or view the sheikh says anna hadhi al-aya nuzilat fi ahli al-kitab wa anna ahli al-kitab la yujbirun ala al-dukhul fi al-islam bal idha aradu al-baqa ala dinihim mukinu min dhalika bi shart bi shart an yadfa'u al-jizya lil-muslimin wa hum saghirun amma ghayruhum amma ghayruhum min al-kafara fala yuqbalu midhum ghayr al-islam aw al-qatl li'annahum laysa lahum din wal wathaniya din batil So then the Sheikh brings some other uh, views here, which is good for our knowledge. So uh, let's go through it. He says, Al-Qawl Al-Thani, the second view or the uh, uh, speech about this this ayah, this particular ayah that we had read in the first paragraph. He says that, uh, it said that this ayah was revealed uh, to uh, the people of the book, in regards to the people of the book, the Jews and Christians. Um, uh, and the people of the book, uh, then they are not like forced or uh, to, you know, convert to Al-Islam. You know, they're not held, for example, Rasul, you know, you must convert, you know, to Islam. Rather, uh, if they want to remain on their deen, uh, then uh, they, they can do. They're allowed to remain on their deen with a condition. The condition is that they pay the jizya, the tax, the jizya to the Muslims. And they are made to be small because of the falsehood that they are upon. Yeah. And they are kept like that until they accept the truth because at the end of the day, Allah's religion is one, right? Oh, uh, then the Sheikh says, as for other than them from the disbelievers, uh, then that is, uh, 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 the, whatever they are upon is not accepted them except for Islam or death. This is the other view. Because he said, because they are not, uh, that they are not from, uh, from, uh, from the religion or from those religions, for example, um but you know they uh, their their deen is of uh, polytheism paganism and such and so it is falsehood completely falsehood and then the sheikh says al qawl al and the third speech on this on this ayah the third view on the ayah he says anna hadhi al ayah mansukha fi ayat al jihad hadhi fi awwal al amri qabla an yushra al jihad thumma shara al jihad shara al jihad فنسخت هذه الآية ولكن القول الأول هو الصحيح. so let's just stop there for a second because then uh, uh, we can continue. Uh, so then the Sheikh says the third view is that this ayah is abrogated. Uh, this ayah was abrogated by the ayah ayah regarding jihad. and this is in the, in in the beginning of the affair. it was before uh, it, the Sheikh says that it, it was before uh, before Uh, jihad was legislated and then jihad was legislated and so uh, the the ayah was abrogated so then the sheikh goes on to say he says walakin al qawl al awwal huwa sahih he says that however the first speech the first view which was the if we go back uh here this paragraph that we read here where the sheikh said uh with regards to that there's no compulsion in religion and that peop- the person who enters it needs to be content and nobody is forced to accept it then this is the correct view is this paragraph that we read here right with regards to that the truth has been uh, has been clarified from falsehood but those the two views uh, they they are they're there but the the most correct and the, the the correct view is the first one that we read yeah 
So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, أن الآية غير منسوخة وأن الدين لا يدخل في القلوب بالإكراه وإنما يدخل بالإختيار لكن من لم يقبل الدين يعامل المعاملة اللائقة به من من قتل أو أخذ جزية مما شرع الله سبحانه وتعالى في حقه. So then the Shaykh just says here that the going back to the first uh, uh, paragraph where that's the correct view and he says that this ayah is not abrogated uh, and that the deen uh, and that the deen is not he, he one does not enter the deen or doesn't enter their heart with compulsion that there's no compulsion there's no you can't force somebody to believe uh, in the deen for example deen in islam or in fact anything right uh, indeed it enters with choice there's a choice. The person chooses it. He's content with it. And then he enters his heart. Then that's true belief. Yeah. And he's not forced. However, the Sheikh says, whoever uh, does not accept the deen and he, you know, he, uh, you know, does the actions, uh, the actions that are, uh, that are befitting, for example, be min, min qatlin from, from, for example, uh, 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 for example, death, or taking the jizya, uh, then whatever has been legislated, what Allah has legislated, then that is in its right to be executed, right? So that's what the Shaykh has mentioned here, uh, generally speaking. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, uh, So the Shaykh is explaining the other part of the ayah now. So whoever disbelieves in the false deities, the ta'ut, and believes in Allah. So then the Shaykh says here, at ta'ut المراد جميع التوابيت في في الإبادة أو ال أو الاتباع أو في الطاعة لأن لأن كلمة التاغوت هنا عامة قدم الكفر بالتاغوت على الإيمان بالله لأن الإيمان بالله لا ينفع إلا بعد الكفر بالتاغوت فمن آمن بالله ولم يكفر بالتاغوت فإنما لا ينفعه إيمانه فالذي يقول إنه مؤمن ويصلي ويسوم ويزكي ويحج ويفعل الطاعات طاعات لكنه لا يتبرأ من الشرك ولا ولا المشركين ويقول لا لا دخل لي فيهم هذا لا يعتبر مسلما لأنه لم يكفر بالتاوت. So the Sheikh mentions a very important point and he says here yeah, that that the the purpose uh, the purpose and the meaning regarding uh, uh, this ayah he says that is all of the ta'ud. So have you know disbelieving as Allah says, "For me, yakfur bi ta'ud wa yu'min billah." So whoever disbelieves in the uh, false deities, so it's all of the false deities, whether that's being somebody who's being followed. Or obedient, you know, the types of uh, tawagi or deities that, that we discussed in the previous week. Then all of these, uh, all of them are to be uh, uh, disbelieved in. Uh, and the Sheikh says, why do we say all? Because he says that the word, the way it's been mentioned, um, it, it, it's, it, it benefits um uh, it's 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 general. It's general in its meaning. Meaning all the, all false deities. And that al kufr in the ayah that al kufr uh, al kufr bit taghut having dis, uh, disbelieving in, in in the false deities it preceded uh, uh, believing in iman. So like in this ayah, so the sheikh explained the ayah. He says so what comes first in the ayah here in this paragraph? If you look, uh, it's whoever disbelieves in taghut and believes in Allah. So the belief in Allah has been preceded with having this belief in Tawud. And this is what the Shaykh is making the point here. He says, so uh, because if you believe in Allah, but you do not disbelieve in 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 the in, in the false deities, then your iman does not benefit you. And so this is why the Shaykh says that Allah mentioned having this belief in the false deities first and then having iman in Allah and then it's benefiting you.
The Sheikh says, for example, uh, you know, you'll find somebody, for example, you know, he's, he's a mu'min, he's a believer, you know, he's, he, he believes and he prays and he fasts and he gives charity and he, you know, he, uh, he makes the hajj and he does all kinds of uh, obediences, good deeds. However, he doesn't free himself from polytheism and he doesn't free himself from the polytheists and he says, Ah, oh, there's no end. Uh, no, there, uh, there's no point. In me, you know, getting involved. For example, uh, in them, you know, I'm not going to say anything about them. They've got their own thing. I've got my own. For example, like this. Then the Sheikh says that this is not con this person is not considered a Muslim. Why? Because he has not disbelieved in the false deities. And this is remembered. Uh, this is at the start of the book. The Sheikh also explained the meaning of La Ilaha Illallah. There's affirmation and negation, and same thing is happening here in this ayah. If you noticed, and if you if you uh, realized that there's there's affirmation and negation in the ayah, and as we know, we have to negate all false deities and all that is worshipped besides Allah, and we have to affirm that only Allah is to be worshipped in truth. Yeah, and and we do that when we say La ilaha illallah. That's exactly what it means: affirmation and negation. We don't just affirm and then say, yeah, yeah, they're doing it. It's okay, whatever. Because then, you, you know, you're actually not entering in, in the meaning of La ilaha illallah. You've not understood what it actually means. Alhamdulillah, we, we understood this. The Sheikh explained it earlier on in the book and he's mentioned it again here as we finish this book. Alhamdulillah. So then the Sheikh says, فَلَا بُدَى مِنُ الْكُفْرِ بِالْتَعْوُوتِ وَهُوَ رَفْضٌ رَفْضُ الْتَعْوُوتِ وَاَتِقَادِ بِمُطْلَانِهِ وَالْإِبْتِعَادَ عَنْهُ وَنَهْلِهِ لَا بُدَى مِنْ هَذَا فَلَا يَصِحُ إِيمَانُ فَلَا يَصِحُ إِيمَانُ إِلَّا بَعْدَ الْكُفْرِ بِالْتَعْوُوتِ So in this short paragraph, the Sheikh, he goes on to say here that so therefore it's, it's incumbent um, uh, that we disbelieve in all the false deities. We disbelieve in the false deities and we reject all of them. And we, and we believe firmly in the hearts or that all of that is falsehood and we stay away from that and we stay away from its people and we stay away from the, that and its people the sheikh says it's incumbent that is incumbent it's a must because your iman a person's iman is not correct except that he disbelieves in these false deities that's very important as the sheikh mentioned as well so then the Sheikh goes to say, he says, وَفِي الْآيَةِ الْأُخْرَى In another ayah, he says, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولَ أَنْ عَنِعْبُدَ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ And this ayah the Sheikh mentioned in a previous few lessons. He did mention this if you remember. That's from Surah Al-Nahl verse 36. We, we'll, we'll go back to the meanings in a second. The Sheikh says, فَلَا تَصِحُوا إِبَادَةَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِاجْتِنَابِ الطَّاغُوتِ لَا يَجْتَ so then, uh, let's just uh, go to the ayah. Surah Al-Nahl, verse 36. Let's go there. We'll read the whole ayah. And verily we have sent among every ummah, community and nation, a messenger proclaiming, Worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from Tawut, all false deities, etc. I do not worship uh, the false deities besides Allah. Then of them was some whom Allah guided and of them was some upon whom the strain was justified. So travel through the land and see what was the end of those who denied the truth. That's all I And if you remember quite rightly, uh, uh, the Sheikh mentioned this a few times uh, in, 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 in our past lessons as well. Alhamdulillah. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here, it says that the, that the worship... Uh, that the worship of Allah is not correct except that uh, we uh, avoid these false deities. Why? Because he says that that two opposites don't come together. It's like the South Pole and South Pole, uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I won't use that example. I don't know that's a good example, but two opposites, uh, let's keep it simple. Two opposites uh, do not come together. Yeah? Things that oppose each other, they don't come together. Yeah? They repel each other. And so the Sheikh says, Iman, it doesn't come together with kufr in the heart. It can't exist together. It's either it's either kufr, we're talking about the major kufr here, it's either major disbelief or you actually have belief. Uh, and so the Sheikh says uh, that belief and kufr al-akbar, the greater uh, 
uh, disbelief. They don't come together. They, they cannot come together in heart. As for the lesser kufr, the lesser disbelief, then this can. Yeah? There's a difference. And the Sheikh explained it was here. And so, um, the Sheikh goes on to say, in the fi- I think this is the final point. And we finished the book. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Uh, we don't we have we don't have long to go. We just have another couple of pages. Inshallah, we'll be finished and then we finish the book. So uh, we, this is going to be a little bit of a longer lesson, but we just we should finish the book now. Inshallah, we're so close. So point eighty four. Uh, the Sheikh says, "Qala uh, al-Sheikh wa hada ma'na la ilaha illallah yani al-kufr bi-ta'wud wal-iman billah." And we mentioned this earlier, but the Sheikh mentions it now uh, as well. He says that what is mentioned here in the previous paragraph that is the meaning of la ilaha illallah. That we disbelieve in all the false deities and we uh, we negate all of them and we affirm uh, uh, Allah as the only true uh, uh, God uh, uh, to be worshipped, Allah alone, nobody else. And he says this is the meaning uh, what was mentioned above uh, with regards to uh, the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Then the Sheikh says, Al-Islam, mentions about Al-Islam, he says, Al-Islam, what is Islam lillahi bi tawheed wal inqiyad lahu bi ta'a wal khulusi min shirki wa ahli. هذا هو رأس أمر الدين الشهادتان هما رأس الإسلام وهما أصل الإسلام فلا يدخل الإنسان فلا يدخل الإنسان في الإسلام إلا إذا أتى بشهادتين نطقا وعلما وعملا واعتقادا لا يكون الإنسان مسلما إلا بذلك شبه الدين بالجسم الذي له رأس وعمود وسنام فإذا قطع الرأس أو لم يكن هناك رأس فإنه لا بقاء للحياة كذلك بدون التوحيد لا بقاء للدين لأنه هو الرأس الذي إذا قطع أو زال زالت الحياة وفسد البدن So then the Sheikh says, he mentions Islam, so going back to the more general topic, he says, Al-Islam, it is to uh, surrender and submit your will to Allah Jalla Wala upon Tawheed, as we all know, monotheism, and the Sheikh explained this in the book, uh, in his book, and in his explanation. And, you know, being uh, subservient and lowering yourself and being humble and, uh, and uh, with obedience and, uh, you know, um, being far away from shirk, and removing shirk from yourself and and removing yourself from its people this is he says that this is at the this is the head of the affair of this team it is the top level the head of this team the affair the uh, the main affair of this deen the two shahadas um the two testifications they are the head of islam and they are the foundation of islam so a person a human being does not enter al islam except if he comes by testifying the two testifications upon his tongue with knowledge, with knowledge, knowing what they mean and acting upon them and believing in in that. A, per, a, a human being is not a Muslim except with that or by that. And the Sheikh brings the example, he says, for example, like, you know, you can give an example where he compares the religion to a, a body, for example. He says, you have a head, you know, you have, for example, uh, uh, the main parts of the body, etc. If the head is cut off, then the the body will not survive. If the head is cut off, it's finished. It goes, it will, it will be destroyed. And likewise, he says, like that, Tawheed is at the head. And, and, and that's why if Tawheed remains and the rest of the person's deen is upright, if the person does not have Tawheed, then he has no deen, he has no religion. He is on a religion that is other than Islam. The Sheikh says because the head is, if it is cut or it it, 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 it ends, it disappears, it no longer exists, then life ends as well and the body becomes corrupted. Right? So that's a clear enough example, alhamdulillah, for us. Then the Sheikh goes, Wa umud alladhi yakumu alayhi huwa salah. Fabiduni umud. لا يقوم الإسلام مثل بيت الشعر أو 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 الخيمة إذا لم يكن هناك أمور تقوم عليه فإنها لا تقوم فلا يقوم بيت فلا يقوم بيت إلا بأمود بأمود فإذا فقد الأمود 
لا يقوم البيت كذلك الصلاة إذا ف... إذا إذا فقدت فإن الإسلام لا يقوم ولذلك قال العلماء إن من ترك الصلاة تكاسل فإنه يكفر على الصحيح ولو كان يعترف بوجوبها لأنه لا فائدة من ال... من الاعتراف بالوجوب مع عدم التطبيق وعدم العمل لا فائدة من ذلك ولذلك حكم المحققون ولذلك حكم المحققون من أهل العلم بكفر من من ترك الصلاة متعمدا ولو كان يقر بوجوبها أما من كان يجحد وجوبها فهذا كافر بإجماع المسلمين So then the Sheikh goes on to give us further example he says so the pillars are those things that hold up uh, 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 hold up the deen that, that uh, uh, allow it to stand firmly what is it it is also salah the prayer so without these pillars islam will not stand and he gives the example of a house or uh, a tent for example without its foundations or without the poles that hold the tent up for example then it will collapse And you won't be able to use it as a tent, for example, it'll collapse, it won't exist as a proper tent, as it should be. So, it w- uh, so a house or a tent, it's not, it doesn't stand and it does, it's not in its uh, correct way uh, and upright, except with its pillars. So the Sheikh says that these pillars, for example, uh, then the Sheikh says, like that, like that, the prayer, if the prayer is lost, for example, um, If the person is not praying, for example, or he does not pray, uh, uh, then uh, the is, is Islam is, is not, it doesn't stand. And the Sheikh says, uh, unlike that, the scholars, they said, the, the scholars said, whoever leaves the Salah out of laziness, laziness, for indeed he, is, he has disbelieved. And uh, uh, he has disbelieved. And even if he, proclaims or admits its or accepts or professes its obligation. Why? Because there is no benefit in his profession, uh, sorry, his, his uh, uh, confession of its obligation uh, uh, without actually cutting out and praying and doing the actions of the prayer. For example, performing the prayer. There's no benefit from, uh, from that if he doesn't pray. Uh, and the sheikh, the sheikh says likewise and like that uh, uh, the uh, the people of knowledge have also said that uh, whoever leaves the salah on purpose whoever leaves the prayer intentionally and even if he affirms its obligation then he is he is fallen to kufr uh, and whoever rejects the obligation of the prayer then he is a disbeliever by the consensus of the muslims all the muslims that all the people of knowledge they agree upon this they agree upon this is widespread agreement consensus the people of knowledge that the person who rejects the salah for example uh, uh, and uh, rejects the uh, that the salah is an obligation upon the Muslims and this person uh, by consensus is a uh, consensus of the Muslims is a, a disbeliever so then the Shaykh goes on وَذِرْوَا تُو سِنَامِ الْجِهَادِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ ذِرْوَا تُو سِنَامِ الْأَمْرِ وَهُوَ الْدِينِ الْجِهَادِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَالْجِهَادِ دَلِيلٌ عَلَى قُوَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ إِذَا وَجَدَ إِذَا إِذَا وَجَدَ الْجِهَادَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَهَذَا دَلِيلٌ عَلَى قُوَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ لِأَنَّ الْجِهَادَ لَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا مِنْ قُوَّةِ إِيمَانٍ وَقُوَّةِ مَادَةٍ Um, so then the Sheikh says here at the beginning of the paragraph that, uh, and so at the top, at the peak of the religion, at the, uh, uh, at the very sort of like peak of the religion. So we talk, we got the Sheikh's been talking from the very foundations of religion. Now we move on to the peak. The peak of the religion is jihad in the path of Allah. You know, fighting and striving in the path of Allah, fighting in the path and the way of Allah. Jalla and the Sheikh says that this is like at the top, or you know, the top of the peak, this affair in the deen. And uh, the Sheikh says that this is the jihad in the path of Allah. And he says that uh, the uh, he says uh, jihad is evidence uh, is e- uh, when jihad happens and occurs, it is evidence of the strength of Islam. So if 
if it, if jihad is found in the path of Allah, if jihad is found, and it, uh, for example, and it's there, then this is evidence upon the uh, strength of Islam, because he says that the Sheikh says that jihad it is it 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 isn't in existence. It doesn't occur except from the uh, from the strength of iman and having the from the material strength as well as the iman from your belief. <coughs> So then the Shaykh goes on to say, for Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, جعل ثلاثة أشياء لدين الرأس والأمود والسنام فبعدم الرأس لا وجود للدين أصلا فالذي لا يحقق الرأس وهو التوحيد لا دين له والله أعلم وصلى الله على نبينا محمد So then the Shaykh says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he made like these three affairs, these three things from the deen. You know that there's a head, there's his pillars, and there's the the peak, the peaks of it, the peaks of the of, of it's like this, and um, and so without the head, uh, then there is no deen. So if the head is not there, there's no deen, there's no foundation, and and then you can't, it's not actualized, uh, and and that is the tawheed, and without tawheed, there is no deen. There's no Islam without tawheed. And then the Sheikh says, uh, Allah, and Allah knows best. And then he sends prayers and salutations upon the Prophet uh, وسلم, And then he goes on to say, وَلَذِي لَا يُسَلِّي لَا يَكُمْ لَهُ دِينَ وَإِنْ شَهِدَ أَنَا لَا إِلَهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ لِأَنَّهُ يَحْتَاجُ إِلَى أُمُودِ يُقِيمْ عَلَيْهِ الدِّينَ وَهُوَ لَا يُوجَدْ إِلَّا بِصَلَاةِ وَإِذَا, uh, وإذا فقد, uh, فقد, الجهاد, فقد الجهاد فقدت القوة في الإسلام وصار إسلاما ضعيفا وصار المسلمون مستضعفون فلا قو فلا قوة فلا قوة أو فلا قوة للإسلام والمسلمين إلا بالجهاد في سبيل الله عز وجل فهو علامة القوة ووفق ووفقد ووفقده علامة الضعف هذا وجه تشبيه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لهذا الأمور الثلاثة ب بالنسبة للدين رأس وأمود وسنام كما أن البعير إذا صار له سنام هذا يدل على أنه قوي وإذا لم يكن له سنام فهذا يدل على أنه هزيل ضعيف. So then the Sheikh goes on to say here that without the prayer, without the prayer, then the person's deen al Islam does not stand uh, and and his his testifications uh, of of the shahada thing uh, do, do not stand. Uh, um, and so, and he says, because he needs these pillars for him, these pillars to be in place for his deen to be upright and to stand. Uh, uh, and then the Sheikh goes on to say here, uh, for example, it, and that that won't occur except, for example, if the person has prayer, establishes the prayer. Uh, and for example, if the jihad is lost and is no longer in existence, then. Uh, Strength is lost in Al Islam, and Islam, beco- and Islam becomes weak, and the Muslims become uh, the weak ones in uh, on on the earth. Uh, so the Sheikh says here, that there is no strength uh, for Islam and the Muslims except by way of jihad in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, and who uh, and it is a sign of strength, and with losing it, it is a sign of um, weakness. And the Sheikh says that this is just uh, uh, from the point of comparison or from what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said with regards to these three affairs, uh, uh, with regard to um, the deen. So uh, the head and the, the, the pillars and, for example, the peak points of the humps, for example. And the Sheikh brings an example to clarify this here. He says, uh, for example, you have like animals, a camel, for example. Um, uh, if, uh, uh, if, it, if a camel has a hump or a bigger hump, for example, then you know this demonstrates and shows us that it is strong, that it's become strong. Uh, and if it and and if it doesn't uh, have a, a home, then we know that that uh, we know from that that it is weak and you know thin, weak uh, uh, like that. And then the sheikh brings that just by way of example and comparison. Then the sheikh goes to say in the final paragraph here: كذلك المسلمون اليوم مستضعفون في الأرض. هذا في الحديث إذا تبايأتم بالعينة وأخذتهم أدناب البقر وتركتم الجهاد صلت الله عليكم ذلا لا ينزعه منكم حتى ترجعوا إلى دينكم فترك الجهاد ذل وضعف للمسلمين ووجوده دليل القوة والسمن 
كالصنام للحي... الح... الحيوان وبهذا انتهى شرح هذا الكتاب المبارك ثلاثة الأصول So then the Sheikh in the final paragraph he mentions the hadith and he says that like he says like that the Muslims today we're talking about present day time now so the Muslims today are weak in the earth they're weak on the on this earth upon this earth and and and, and this is uh, and, and likewise in the hadith as we read from the hadith of the Prophet sallam and the translation of it is uh, if you sell anything uh, I think this is let me see I'll read the whole I'll read the whole hadith. If you sell anything on credit to anyone on the condition that you will buy it back for a low price, al-ina, take hold of the tails of cattle, become pleased with agriculture and give up jihad, Allah will make disgrace prevail over you and he will not remove it from you till you return to your religion. And that's reported by Abu Dawood, translation of Nafi'ah. You can, you can look into that, the references at the bottom of the page here, if anybody wants to have a look at that um, in more detail. And then the Sheikh says that this uh, hadith that's mentioned here, then whoever leaves off jihad they become weak, the Muslims become weak, and it's, it's a reason for the weakness of the Muslims. Uh, and and uh, the Sheikh says that, and when it is present, then this is an evidence and demonstrates the strength of the Muslims. Uh, for example, like the humps and the, you know, um, of, of the uh, animals, as an example, as he gave earlier. And the Sheikh says, and with that, uh, the explanation of uh, the book, this blessed book, Flat al Usul is complete and this was the explanation of Sheikh Salih Fawzan Hafidhullah and so Alhamdulillah we finished this book now, so we'll end the lesson there and inshallah next week we'll begin uh, with another book um, uh, The Six Principles I know Brother Wasim did to the lesson uh, but I don't know if they were recorded, so we'll go through that book inshallah and then we'll move on to another book after that, so we've got uh, uh, all the books of Akida uh, at least the main ones We've uh, got a translation of them, we've studied them, inshallah. So we'll stop there. Barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Ashadu wa la ilaha ilan. Wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.